Data architecture, Salesforce indexes explained. Welcome to another session of data architecture. Today, we're gonna to be looking at Salesforce indexes. Now they're a little different than standard database indexes. And I'm also gonna be kind of sharing an analogy for people who are not familiar with what indexes are. So we're gonna dive into Salesforce indexes, indexes explained, and I'm gonna do a small little demo. So we're gonna be doing a little explanation about the Salesforce engine, and then we'll be diving deeper into the indexes. So first, Salesforce is a multi-tenant architecture. Um, that means that it's hosting the one Salesforce environment, it's hosting many customers' environments while keeping them separate. So it is doing keeping separation between what's called the tenants um, and giving you the security and access. So it's, sep it's different than a pure dedicated environment. And this is a little diagram. We don't need to go into detail. You can find it yourself at architect.salesforce.com fundamentals and the link right here. And you have multiple tenants, you know, different companies that are each making requests. They're going to an application runtime. And then there is a virtual tenant database. So it's getting down to the specific database that's holding the data. And then ultimately it makes a way to what's called the physical database and getting the tenant specific data. And there, we're not diving deep into the details, but the point is because we're not doing what's called a dedicated environment, Salesforce is handling a level of abstraction. Again, if you want more detail, follow the link I have included here. But there are shared structures. So these are essentially tables about data. This is, there's objects and there is a table of objects, a table of fields, a table of data, and many level, many different tables. And you can find this again at the architecture, architect.salesforce.com and learn these details. The key point is that there is a level of abstraction over a standard, what would be a standard database access. And so ultimately your data is gonna be in this massive table, excuse me, massive table where it's gonna have the or, you know, a, a GUID to uniquely identify the row, the org that your data is in, the object, and ultimately the values so across all of the data. And so Salesforce will also have standard, a table of standard objects, a table of standard object custom fields, a table of custom objects, and this information can be found on Salesforce Help. You'll be able to find this exact information. Now, traditional databases have native indexes, which allow you to quickly find data. However, this isn't practical. So there is a level of abstraction and Salesforce manages what we consider a Salesforce index and translates it into the actual physical database for the underlying data. Now what we're gonna do is for those that aren't as familiar with what an index, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use an analogy of a library. So in libraries, you have big rooms filled with books and the books are in some form of an order. You could have ordered them by title. You could have ordered them by author. You could have ordered them by subject. Ultimately, there is this system called the Dewey Decimal System for organizing the books. And if you needed to search for a particular book, um, you might need that, let's say, starts with the name plumbing, and you didn't, you might have to go in and look book by book by book by book. This is what is called a table scan. When Salesforce has to touch every book and check to see if the name starts with plumbing, that would be a table scan, going through all the books one after the other. So at the worst case scenario, when Salesforce is querying data, it may have to touch every record, a lot quicker than touching every book, but it still has an overhead. The overhead is small with a small number of books, and the overhead grows in a particular S object as the number of books grow. So then, how did they solve that with libraries? What they did is they had what's called a card catalog, small cards with limited information and a reference to the location of the book. And so you would have one card catalog by title, 
one card, and it would have a little index card for every book in the library organized by title. And then you'd have a completely separate copy with one little card for every book in the library organized by subject or by author. And this way, you could scan the card catalogs without having to go over to the books and find what you're looking for. So this card catalog is what we call today an index. So it is a piece of information, a field, name, um, you know, whatever you have, it's called an index, and it allows you to find the book quickly if you have that limited information and you're scanning it in a certain way. When we're scanning data in Salesforce, we have SOCL and SOCL, two ways of querying data. What we're going to be talking about is the SOCL way of querying data. And this is another diagram found in Salesforce Help where when you make a call, you're going to make a request, and then the Salesforce has a librarian. The librarian will get the books for you, and that's called the query optimizer. And the librarian will check the visibility, optimize the query, make the query, and then return the books. And it'll also check what's called the selectivity. And we'll be diving into deeper into this in subsequent sessions. But just know that the librarian gets the book and the librarian knows whether to go to the card catalog or not. Some key terms is we're gonna be making a query. The fetch is actually pulling the query. So once you've found the books, are you returning one column or are you returning a hundred columns? A table scan is when you need to touch every record. And a join is when you need to cross from one object to a second object. So Salesforce has standard indexes. These are indexes that are out of the box on pretty much most standard, many standard objects and, and the custom objects. And these are the standard indexes. Record type ID, division where appropriate, created date, system mod timestamp, name, email, foreign key relationships, and the unique Salesforce ID. So if you're gonna query on one of these fields, you're gonna be accessing what's called a standard index. And then if you were to ask for a query in what's called a selective way and you meet certain criteria, it can speed up the index. You can also request custom indexes to be created on fields. This requires that you ask for a custom index through Salesforce tech support, and it, there are limitations on what custom indexes can be created on. Um, so this is, you can also create a custom index by creating what's called an external ID on a certain field. So you have standard indexes and you have custom indexes. And Salesforce maintains in the multi-tenant environment these index tables and ultimately maps them into your data and so you just make your query and the query optimizer, the librarian, will decide if it can run that index. So we're gonna take a look at an example and we're gonna look at these standard indexes. So we see that name is a standard index. What we're gonna do is, as we learned about the um, query plan tool, we're gonna to look at the, the performance of a query against the name field against the performance against the standard text field. So here is an org which has my standard airports. There's about 70, 75,000 airports. We're looking at a certain field called the IATA number. Now this is going to be a text field and I'll show you the schema for this. So here in the airport object, we go to the fields and we're looking for the IAT code, it's a standard text. This does not have an index out of the box. I could request one, but I have not. So this is a non-indexed field. Now the name field is indexed. Out of the box by Salesforce is indexed. So we're gonna run some queries comparing the data. So we have the name field, which is the ident. And we can see that because if we look at this name field, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be querying against the name field and we're gonna be querying against the IDA code. So let us run a code where we're gonna select ID name from airport where IATA code equals TX. 
So what we're looking for is any of these records that have TX in them. And we're asking it using a like statement and we're gonna run what's called the query plan, which I showed in a previous video. So in this, we had a cost of a 0.67. And there were, the object cardinality is 74,000 records and it found um, these results. So I've modified the query to include the IATA code. So when we execute, we're gonna see that we have this number of results, eight results. We're gonna run the query plan and it was a cost of a 0.67. So we did this statement against the IATA code, a non-indexed, it forced to do a full table scan. There's the concept of the table scan. And therefore it found it in point, a cost of a 0.67. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a second query where the name is like NT. So we're doing a very similar query. What we're doing though is we are following a very similar query and what we're making what's called a selective query. The same syntax, different field, but this is the out of the box name field. And as I've indicated, that has a standard index on it. So we're going to query and execute and we're getting 55 results. So we're getting more results. But when I run the query plan, we have a cost of a 0.0073. So this is a huge difference in performance, um, especially, you know, it's 70,000 records, it's not noticeable, but when, if you were to get into millions of records, it would be. So this second query, by querying the name field in a, what's called a selective manner, I'm getting far better performance than I queried a text field, which was not indexed. Now, I could then ask Salesforce to create an index on this IATA code, and that would drive the performance up significantly. So this is an example of two text fields on the same data set and using a almost identically select, what's called an identically selective query and drastically different cost performances using the query plan tool. So some key elements to know is, is there an index? Is it a standard index or a custom index? And if it is there an index, I'll be explaining in a subsequent video what a selective index is. And then if the, there is the librarian which is querying the data, that's called the query optimizer. And if the query optimizer can use season index, and can use it because it's selective and it meets the selectivity threshold, which are things I'll describe in future videos, then you see you get dramatically different performance with a much smaller cost and using, we can see that using the query plan tool, which I explained in a previous video. So these are the tools and we're gonna keep diving in deeper, but now you know about the query optimizer, the librarian, the index, the card catalog, and we're starting, to, and the query plan tool which is showing us when we get a fast scan or we're going to the going to the books, the, the full table scan. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed Indexes Identified. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to YouTube, Steve Tech Arc, and www.stevetecharc.com.